Okay, today I want to talk about athletic performance and how being in the gym is supposed to improve your athletic performance. It is not about trying to mimic what you do on the field. The idea of being in the gym is a, a what's called GPP, so general physical preparedness. And that's the whole point of being in the gym, to give you a general base so that when you go and do your sport, whatever it is, that you are covering any weaknesses before they start. Now, during season, you're going to be looking at doing, like trying to maintain strength and also be, uh, do recovery work and minimize injury. So overuse injuries happen a lot during your sport. So you need to be doing, uh, I know I played field hockey. So we spend a lot of time in, uh, actually I'll grab a stick, it'll be easier. Spend a lot of time in this position. So we're down in that like quarter squat, our chest is up, we're slightly forward. This is our position. So look at the, the big movers. We've got, we've got lots of quad dominant movement and lots of sort of strain on our lower back. So you need to be looking at doing those opposing muscle groups. So a big one to look at is hamstring strength. So one I learned from listening and watching hundreds and hundreds of hours of West Side Barbell stuff is when you are running, you're not pushing off the ground, you're pulling through. So you're pulling your leg back when you run. You're not pushing forward. So as you run, you've got to pull your leg back when you grip the ground. So that's you've got to do a lot of hamstring work. It doesn't matter what sport you play in. When you are running and running at speed, you need to do a lot of hamstring work. Um, the other thing is because uh, with field hockey, we're predominantly on our right-hand side. You need to keep your core muscles engaged. I did see a video where they had this girl like doing dribbling drills with a weight plate on a treadmill. That's what I mean by like you're, you're trying to simulate a, it's not something I would do. And I don't think a lot of good coaches would do. You, you're already overusing those muscles as it is. You need to counterbalance that by working on the op opposing muscles to make those stronger and you're a more balanced athlete. If you're not working on those uh, opposing muscles or the, the, the ones that are being left behind, you're, gonna do, you're doing yourself a disservice. That's when injuries come through. I know injuries. Like if you've played sport at any level, you know about injuries. I tore my piriformis twice. I tore my hamstring once. I've had Osgood Slatter's disease, which is where your tendons are harder than your bones and they start pulling off over your kneecaps, uh, over off your shin bone. And it, it's excruciating and it happens generally when you're about 14 to 16 in that growth period for, for boys. I broke my arm twice. That had nothing to do with sport. It just is what it is. I tore the cartilage in my wrist playing field hockey, rolled ankles, you name it, I've done it. So I'm telling you now, if you're not doing correct rehab and correct prehab, you're going you're gonna to get hurt. That's why I got hurt. I was being a field hockey player, you're in this position the whole time. So 
I'm not doing the opposing muscles. I wasn't working hamstring strength and I wasn't working like I was doing sit-ups. That's not core strength. Sit-ups are not core strength. They're a movement, but they're not core strength. You need to be doing like side planks. Um, there's heaps of different plank variations. You know, normal, regular planks, you can do like stirring the pot and but they're the things that you need to be doing loaded planks, so you, where you're putting weight on and stuff like that. You're doing yourself a disservice, or if your trainer is trying to get you to do like a sport simulated exercise, it, that's not what it's for. The idea of being in the gym is to prepare you physically to do your sport. If you're going out there trying, to, unless you're doing a competing in a barbell sport, CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting. They're really your only, they're your barbell sports. So you're, what you do is very specific in the gym for those sports. For everyone else, you don't, you, you, there's no prerequisite for certain exercises you have to do. But if you don't do the, if you don't use your time in the gym to make yourself better, it's to improve your physical preparedness when you go and attack your sport. So for people who are field hockey players, hamstring strength, core strength, upper back strength, because you're always in that forward position, you're and it's like that for most sports, everything's in front, so we're always here. You need to do the back muscles. You need to do, you need to be training your traps, you need to be training your, your rhomboids, your erectors, all those need to be firing. You need your lats nice and strong as well, your upper traps, lower traps. There's lots of little muscles in your shoulders. You need to be doing your external rotators, you need to do those ones more than you need to worry about, especially in season, worry about, you know, how big's my bench. Not really going to, like, yes, it's great to, <coughs> a great strength indicator, but if you're, there's no point being, like, having a strong bench if you're internally rotated and you're a complete mess when you try and play a sport. You need to have strong hips. So things you can do to strengthen your hips. Um, check out West Side Barbell stuff for strengthening your hips. So belt squats, hip thrusts. You can do even like regular squats. You can deadlift. You can single leg, double leg. And that's the other thing. You've got to, you've got to work. Find where your imbalances are and work on bringing the imbalance imbalances up so that you are ready to, like you're not getting those overuse injuries. You're not becoming dominant on one side. So if you become overdominant on one side, the other side's weak, can't catch up. That's when we get injuries. It's, there's so much other stuff you need to worry about rather than <clears throat> if you've got a big bench for sport. The idea is in the gym, you worry about being physically prepared for your sport. You're not trying to simulate your sport in the gym. You're trying to improve your physical preparedness so that when you go out to play your sport, you are ready to go. You've ticked off all that. You're less likely to get injured. You're stronger so you can take bumps. You should be trying to be faster, trying to be more explosive. Um, and if your training is consisting of like just running and you're a field hockey player and all you're doing is like long distance running, the game has changed, especially at those top levels. The game's changed. If you're playing like anywhere up, you're going to be on you might be on for like 10 minutes at a time, but in that time, they're looking at speed. How fast can you run? 100 meters. That's how long a field is. 
there's no point saying I've got a, you know, I can run 3Ks in, you know, 12 minutes or whatever. That means nothing. How fast can you run 100? Because that's the distance you're covering. If you can't run 100 meters in, you know, around 11 or 12 seconds, that's it. Like, I don't know what, how fast you should be, but, there's, you know, you can't be like, cool, you've got a great 3K time, but you never run 3Ks nonstop. You run 100 meters, maybe. You probably wouldn't even run that. You probably run at most in a full dead out sprint is if you go from, so say 25 to the opposite end, you're probably running 75 meters. That would be your max distance. So you need to improve your, your, your 50 meter time, your 70 meter time, your 40 meter time, your 30 meter time. Improving your 3K time isn't going to help. Yes, you, you still need to have that aerobic capacity so that you can do those repeats, but you need to be faster so that you can cover the ground quicker. Because it doesn't matter how good your 3K time is, if you can't run that 70 meters faster, you know, one or two half a uh, half a second faster than the guy next to you what's it matter you know your f initial three to five meters if you can't explode out of that run and gain an extra meter on that one or two push-offs you're doing yourself a massive disservice cool your 3k time you got it down from you know 14 minutes to 12 minutes but you still can't run 70 meters in you know under 11 seconds or something like you're slow. The game isn't played over three Ks. The game is played over 70 meters. You'll do a sprint. You'll probably slowly jog, you'll jog back, work back, but you'll never run three Ks nonstop. We've got, we've all got these cool watches and stuff now. Track your running, like see how much of it you actually sprint or how much you're constantly running. You, if you have a look, you've got like sprint intervals, you've got, you know, bits where you're jogging, bits where you're walking. It's just how the game's played. You've got move into position. You don't just constantly run at a single pace for, you know, 70 minutes. So think about those things when you're going into your training. Now, if you're training, I know when I was playing as high as I could play, it was like long distance running all the time. Long distance running, long distance running. The game's just not played that way anymore. Like you don't run nonstop for 35 minutes anymore. The game's broken up into quarters. So you've got 17 and a half minute quarters and you don't run nonstop in quarters. You need to be able to do repeats on you know minimal rest it's not about running consistently non-stop it is you know repeat efforts and rest and that's what you should be looking at improving if you can improve your say 50 meter time or your 40 meter time that is going to be more impressive and more helpful to you as a hockey player than trying to run you know, 3Ks in 12 minutes. If you can get your your 50 meter time down from, let's say, 10 seconds to uh, nine seconds, and you can take a second off your time, think about how much that's going to improve when you're out on the hockey field. You'll be able to run, do that sprint, and you might be, you know, in one second, you might be, eight meters ahead of your opponent so that's what you've got to think about if you can increase that sprint time uh not increase decrease your sprint time over anywhere from anywhere really anywhere from like 30 meters to say 70 meters if you can decrease that time that's going to help you more than 
you know, dropping your 3K time. Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoy that and get something out of it.